Hello and welcome back to the studio. I'm going to continue doing my painting from a photograph series. It seems to be quite a popular topic so I'm going to make some more. Now one of the things that I know that people want to learn to paint, excuse me while I rearrange my papers, but one of the things I know people want to learn to paint is how to get sort of images of buildings onto a canvas and it is quite a task but there are actually sort of basically three ways of doing it. Now the first way is simply just to freehand it, to take a pencil and to just literally sketch what you see. So if you're very lucky and you have one of those sort of brains that can figure all these little things out and angles, then congratulations, but you're probably in the, in the minority. If most of you are sitting there going like, I wouldn't have a clue where to start, then you're probably just like the rest of us. So we just need a little bit more of a technique. So method one, freehand. A second method is to use a grid, which is to simply divide your photograph up into a grid. In other words, to draw a section of lines across your painting. So maybe one through the center here, sorry, not reference photograph, and draw a line through there. And then just simply draw the same grid on your canvas. And then in each little box that you've drawn on here, you find the corresponding little box on here and you draw what's in that box the grid method. So that's method number two. But again, this involves using, well, some complicated math mathematics sometimes. You've got to get the right number of little boxes and they've got to match the right number of little boxes on here. I made the mistake that sometimes actually drawing, maybe my boxes weren't square. They were slightly maybe oblong. So everything went out of proportion. And again, I got myself into a bit of a pickle but it's a good method that works reliably well once you're used to it. I tend to like to simplify my pictures sometimes and instead of actually making grids, I use the age old method of simply tracing things. And there's no shame in that. If you like to draw things and paint things, but you don't want to go through all the hassle of the maths, then simply trace it. Now, if you're watching this on a computer, the chances are you've got a printer sitting nearby, hopefully, or you have access to a printer. What I've done today is I've simply chosen a canvas which is 12 by 16 and I've taken the biggest size image I can of this little cabin and I'll just move it around on the canvas. I want this to be the main feature so I've chosen a canvas which is smaller than normal and made this image as big as possible and I'm simply going to trace it onto my background. That's method number three, 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 tracing. I might just take a pencil and put some graphite on the back and then just hold it onto the front of the canvas with a couple of little bits of tape and then just simply use a biro to get a basic outline. So that's the technique I'm going to be demonstrating today. So you know the routine. Photographs at the ready and get those pencils out and let's start tracing. So here's my reference photograph. I've got it attached to a nice firm surface. I'm going to be using this, a graphite pencil apply a generous amount to the back of the photograph. If you're very posh, you might have some of this graphite paper, but do take care. It has a right side and a wrong side. And well, yes, I've actually done the whole tracing on the wrong side. For this barn, all I'm really interested in is the main structure, the angles of the roof and the uprights and doorway. Now, time to position our reference picture. I want to be probably down to the left side a little bit. The corner of my barn is actually missing on this photograph, but making sure the peak of the roof doesn't point to the very center of my canvas. I'll hold it in place with a couple of small pieces of masking tape. Now, my weapon of choice for tracing is a biro. It's not so sharp that it digs right through and it doesn't leave too much of an imprint or a dent in the canvas. Top tip, check after you put a little bit on, you can actually see what you're tracing. And there, the basic barn is complete. Well, so far so good. So we see tracing, it's a really simple way of getting an image onto the canvas. Now I said earlier on about having no shame in doing a tracing. And what I really meant to say was that I believe that trying to get things done as easily and simply as possible and keep the enjoyment in what you're doing. Now, 
Drawing is definitely the bedstone of many an artist's career, and in time you will learn to draw. But what I found from experience is that by actually painting over and over again from a tracing, somehow my drawing skills improved. I think just visually looking at something that was correct, according to a photograph, actually helped me to understand how perspective works. So, trace things onto your canvases, or use the grid method, or eventually learn to freehand. But make sure you're getting all these proportions right, because that memory will stick with you. And if you get it wrong at the start, well, you might continue making the same mistakes over and over. Now, the eagle-eyed amongst you will notice that I actually had a black and white image here for the tracing part of this painting. And well, two reasons. Firstly, very obviously, I don't want to spend all my money on coloured ink that's just going to be used for a tracing. But more importantly, I wanted to see where the lights and darks are. I know where to put my shadows and where to have my highlights. And it's the reason why I chose this particular photograph as a reference. It wasn't by accident, of course, but this has lovely deep darks, lovely shadowy overhangs, and then bright highlights on the side, and lots of different ranges of contrast here, going from shadow into highlight. So your choice of photographs sometimes, well, it's quite important. And this was the one I chose because I think it's going to give me the best chance of showing you what I'm doing. So what do we do next with this? Well, the technique I'm going to use is called grizzeye or greying out. I've got some Prussian blue and some Van Dyke brown, and I'm going to blend these two together. And it's going to make me a lovely warm gray tone. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, well, just black and white paint would do the job. And yes, you're right, but it gives you a very flat gray color. This will enable me to have a lovely warm tone. In other words, I can make more brown of it or more blue of it. Mixing more to the Prussian blue side will give me a cool gray color, whereas mixing slightly more Van Dyke brown color will give me a warm gray color. So let's blend these two together and add a tiny drop of thinners to thin my paint down. I'm going to use a small round brush just to sketch the image onto the canvas. Let's get on with it. I'm going to mix up my grey colour, Van Dyke Brown and Prussian Blue as I mentioned, and vary the amounts. I've got a sort of grey-green colour coming through, which is going to be perfect for my photograph. Thin the paint with some odourless thinners. Make sure it's thinners and not oil. We want this layer to actually dry. As you can see, I thin my paint so this thin like ink, maybe even a little thinner. Now it's simply a case of going over your tracing. This thinned paint will eventually dry to the canvas and create a nice stain. You'll see that in just a moment. I also block in the areas of shadow, under the eaves of the roof, under that little overhang, and of course across the front of the barn. I actually really enjoy this process of greying in my paintings, and it's something you should be practicing quite often with your own work. It's a lot of fun. A quick double check with my reference photograph, and we're ready to go. Now, let's apply some of this Bob Ross liquid white oil paint. I'm going to put this over the sky and this bushy area on the right hand side, but I'm going to leave the foreground till later. Keep it in a small airtight container for ease of application, but double check that it's well mixed. The oil tends to separate quite quickly. And don't waste what's in your palette knife, rub it on the canvas. Now, I'm going to use an old Bob Ross one inch landscape brush to scrub it very thinly onto my background sky. And as you see, my little barn is well stained onto that canvas. I could even go over the trees and bushes, and all my lines remain clear. Make sure you test your canvas before you apply colour. We want a very thin coat of liquid white. And don't forget, dry that old one inch brush as well. There'll be a lot of liquid white hiding in the bristles. For my background sky, I want a slightly more cheerful colour. I've got some phthalo blue, and I'm going to put just a very small amount on that old one inch brush. I'm going to start in my top left hand corner and apply this colour with some little crisscross strokes. 
I start quite pale and build my colour up. I think I might be adding a few sort of soft subtle clouds to this sky as well. As you come down, don't forget, you can paint right through that bush on the right hand side and even through the top of the barn. This is quite a transparent paint, so all your outlines will still show through very clearly. Now for those subtle clouds, I get my one inch brush and pick up just a very small amount of titanium white on the corner. And as you can see, I left a few pale patches in my sky. With a few dabs of the brush, I can enhance those and turn them into lovely clouds. I think I'll soften them up with a few upward strokes. There. Now for that bush on the right hand side, I've got some sap green and a touch of Van Dyke brown. I think this is quite an autumnal scene. So I want a quite a muted green tone. I'm going to use a Bob Ross Filbert brush. I go into that dark green colour, give it a bit of a dab, and I like to start off by just sort of creating that outline again. It's easy for you to see on the video. I'll put just a few touches in where I think the bush will live, and maybe I'll add a few little extras into the centre of the bush as well doesn't take long for it to start taking shape. But don't forget, there's a nice deep shadow at the base of those bushes. Now for a few branches, I'm using a Bob Ross liner brush and a couple of drops again of odorless thinners. I'm going to mix some black and Van Dyke brown together. Make it thin like ink. And notice how I roll the brush in the paint. And you can see I left a few gaps in this bush so that I can see a little bit of sky through the background. It helps to sort of lighten the area up a bit. I don't want this looking too heavy. Right. Now for some highlights. Some dark sienna and a little bit of yellow ochre. Notice how I put the sienna to the side of the ochre and blend them into each other. It means my yellow ochre remains uncontaminated. I also push into my paint to gather a little bit on the edge of the brush. A few delicate touches here and there is all that's needed. Let's get a bit of a close-up of that, I think. Again, I've loaded my brush with some colour. I vary it quite a bit. This time I've added a little bit of Indian yellow, maybe even a touch of white to that colour. Think about where the light is coming from, mainly from the left side. As my brush runs out of colour, I'll do some of the areas to the right-hand side of those highlights. Now. I make a mistake. I painted a lovely pom-pom right here. And once you see it, well, you can't stop seeing it. Now to underpaint that background land. Van Dyke Brown and Dark Sienna, again on that old one inch brush. Be sure to follow the lay of the land. Now, here's a neat trick coming up. I want to paint up to the very edge of my barn, but without covering it all in paint. I'll use my palette knife as a shield. I place it on the edge of the barn and now I can tap right up to that edge. It's a neat trick and it works like a charm. I want to mix up some nice autumnal colours for this area. I take some Indian yellow and a tiny drop of red. This makes a warm orange tone. Perfect for some fallen leaves. And I'll add just a touch of dark sienna. Again, just to one side. I think this colour will come in useful later in my painting too. Once again, I use my filbert brush and I load it the same way, pressing into the paint to pick up a little colour. Vary your colours a lot. Think about how some rays of light could be getting behind the old barn onto the ground. Occasionally I'll bring a little yellow ochre into this as well. I think some of these leaves have fallen right here on the ground. Adding all this little detail really helps enhance your painting. But it's time to get on with the actual barn. The first thing to do is to block in the area of shadow. And for this I'm going to use some black and Van Dyke brown pick up a small roll of paint on the palette knife 
And now, with some firm pressure, just use this colour to stain the canvas. This is much the same as we would do if we were painting a mountain. I think a lot of people apply too much paint at this stage and then struggle to put highlights on top. That line there is particularly important. It gives us a clear indication of the overhang at the front of the barn. I'll carry on adding dark shadow to the front of the barn as well. I think the light coming from the back corner is sort of casting a nice deep shadow in this area. This line is very important that we keep. It dictates the area between the roof and the front of the barn. It may not be that clear on film, but I'm actually blocking in individual sections of this barn. I'm not just covering it all in. I leave a few little telltale lines here and there for my layout. For a little bit of highlight in the shadowy areas of my barn, I mix some white, some of that black brown color and a hint of phthalo blue. I'm going to use the small edge of my palette knife just to touch in the indication of a few planks on the roof. Now remember the angle here. Despite the fact that we're going under this edge, the planks run front to back. A little confusing sometimes when we're painting, but you'll soon get the hang of it. You'll know if they don't look quite right. The old planks on the barn are in quite a state. They don't have to be too perfect, which makes barns quite a lovely subject for us to have a go at. No perfect straight edges. Suits my style very well. I want to build up this area sort of in several layers. I might start off with getting just the initial boards in position, a few planks here and there, just to get the layout right. Later on, I'll come back and add some enhancements to it. I just want to make sure I get the proportions right and the angles right. This particular edge is also very important. It's good that we know exactly where the edge of the barn is and it just doesn't sink in to the background. I'll do a little bit more work to the side of the barn now. Again, I block in this section, but leave a small indication for the corner of the barn. I think this area at the side of the barn is where they might have parked farm machinery. It's sort of an open, sort of lean-to area. I want a little highlight to the edge, sinking back into a shadow. Again, use your reference photograph and check on it regularly to make sure you're not painting it slightly out of shape. There we go. I'll just tap this down to make it look like it's going back into the undercover area. This barn door has seen better days, but that just adds more character to our painting. A few touches of boards here and there and a couple of old cross braces. And I think we have quite a nice little door. I think the side of my barn sees a little more sunlight. My colour this time is a little bit more to the yellow side. I used some dark sienna, a little bit of that yellow ochre colour. And again, just as before, a few touches here and there to indicate some boards, maybe a nice old window. But take note, there's quite a nice shadow under the eaves of this building. So I make sure my highlights don't go all the way to the top. This whole barn has a corrugated roof, silver grey in colour. So I mix some thaler blue, a touch of white and add a hint of black to it, sort of an off grey colour. Take a small roll on my palette knife. Now top tip, block in the edges first, that way you'll never run out of position. I'll drag the paint down the roof and do this edge here as well. My top tip for painting this roof is don't use too much paint. We started with a grey canvas and we have a silver grey roof. So allow some of that little detail we started with to grin through here and there. Where my roof blends too much with the sky, I add a touch more black. Another top tip for you. Keep those angles working in the right direction. I use the point of my knife and follow those little layout lines. This means my roof always looks correct. Now let's add this rusty area. That colour I used in the background, I've kept to one side. 
I said it would come in useful again. So it's Indian yellow, bright red, and a little touch of dark sienna. And just scrape on a little bit of paint. Once again, don't use too much. Let the underpainting grin through. It adds a lot of character to your painting. I'll use the small blade of my knife just to drag some of this paint down. Lovely and crunchy looking. I'll add a little bit here as well. These orangey colours and the blue colour of the sky and the roof are what they call complementary colours. They work well together. Now, let's think about adding a little bit more detail across the surface of the roof. When you look at the reference photograph, you'll see that there are lots of little ripples and ridges. Some of them got bits of rust on. And well, if they haven't, you can always add some. I want to just drop in a sort of line across here. Obviously, this roof is in two sections. But again, make sure you follow the angle. I was a bit high there. I'll drop it down a little bit as I go across. If you enjoy my painting tutorials, don't forget, give this painting a little thumbs up. That's a like. You can subscribe to the channel for free. That means when I release new videos, you'll see a little reminder in your inbox. Don't forget, when you subscribe, ring the little bell. Thank you. Don't forget this detail on the edge of the roof. Once again, it helps push the background back and bring the edge of the roof forwards. I think we've got a completed barn. It's time to work on the foreground. And again, I'm using an old Bob Ross one inch brush and a very small amount of liquid white. It's just to show that you can leave your painting for a day or two and then come back and work in the foreground. And tell me that doesn't look like it's snow. Well, I'm going to add the autumn colours again. I'll start off with a little bit of that Indian yellow and red colour and then just overpaint it with a little bit of Van Dyke Brown and Dark Sienna. I want to use this brush again, so I'll give it a good dry clean on some paper towel. There's no need to wash it in thinners every time. On my palette, I pulled my Indian yellow together and you see a little touch of liquid white in the center. This just sort of loosens up the color a bit, makes it a little bit more runny and easy to stick to my background. Again, follow the lay of the land. But this looks a bit too sort of neat and tidy for an old yard, maybe. So as I tap, I like to tip my brush slightly on a corner. You see, it gives a slightly more sort of rough look to the ground. There's little sticks and twigs and tufts of grass. Mm, it looks quite nice like that. And suits the rustic look of this old barn. Top tip. Don't fill in all the dark. I know you hear it on lots of my videos, but seeing all those little bits of dark in there really help your painting. Now, how about a nice tree? I said I might put in a silver birch. We might call it an aspen. And you see, I like to use one of my brushes really just to sort of test where it would fit. Not too close to the edge, not too close to the corner of the building, but just about here. That's about right, I think. I'm going to use my palette knife with some Van Dyke Brown and Black. I want to just drop in the line of the trunk. Make sure it comes down and touches the ground. There. I'll do the left side of the tree trunk using the back of the knife blade. I'll let this tree grow right off the top of my canvas. And of course, as Bob would say, every tree has a little friend. So there's that one. Just as before, I add a couple of drops of odorless thinners to my black-brown mixture and use a liner brush, loaded well, to add some little branches. I want to extend the center line a little higher, as I said, off the top of the canvas here. For my branches, I always think of newer branches being slightly more upright, and the older the branches, the longer they get and the more they sort of droop to the ground. So. Think about the shape of your tree being like an arrowhead. Pointy at the top, wider at the sides, and then drooping closer to the ground. I really enjoy painting this silver birch, but I think I might have overdone it slightly. Well, you'll see in a moment, I probably could have stopped about now, but I carried on. 
added his little friend and gave him some more sticks and twigs and branches as well. And here you see what happens when you start having just a little bit too much fun. Oh well, never mind. We'll keep it. To highlight my little silver birch, I've mixed up some white with a hint of Indian yellow. And on the sunny side of my tree trunk, I just touch. Notice I have a very steep angle to my knife. And as soon as you start to move, let the knife blade come off the trunk. Give it a little curl to make it look like the trunk is slightly rounded. For the opposite side of the tree trunk, I've mixed up some blue and white. I want what's called referred light, and a little pale blue colour here really makes the trunk come alive. Almost 3D. Time for some more detail. Around the base of the old barn, I add a few more weeds and grasses. This is probably one of my favourite parts of this painting. The more I add, the more realistic the whole thing looks. Just a few dabs of colour. Yellow ochre with some white in it. Little touches of Indian yellow and little dabs of red here and there. This is the sunny side of my barn, so these colours could be quite sort of brilliant. And just as we turn the corner here against that dark background, well, the contrast between highlights and shadows really stand out. I'll add some nice long tall grasses with my palette knife in a moment just to finish off the illusion. As I go around the front of the cabin, I let my colour dull a little bit. This would be the shadowy side, so tone things down a little bit and I'll do my best to hide that corner just there. I'll add a few more dabs of highlight on the grassy area in front of the cabin too. And as I said, with the edge of my palette knife and a tiny touch of that light colour, I can just add in some of these longer grasses. Just touch and let your knife slide along. All these little details are what people really love to see in your painting, so make sure you allow plenty of time for them with your own work. One last thing, there's a little bar across the front of the cabin. I think it's to stop the roof splaying too much, like a little brace. There. I think I probably want just a few little more details here. I think this tree will be casting a shadow on the ground. I think this looks quite realistic now. I use my liner brush and just a little bit of that dark colour from the tree trunks and just here and there, just stippling in where you think a shadow would fall. The ground's quite rough so it doesn't need to be too much of a detail. I hope you'll agree that this painting from a photograph has been quite a success and using a tracing worked really well for us. Just time for a signature. So here we have it, painting from a photograph, this time a lovely barn, and I think it came out rather well. There's a couple of little elements I think I might want to fiddle with. This tree probably could do with some pruning, and those bushes over there, oh, those pom-poms drove me mad in the end. Leave it, but I might come back and fiddle with that later on. But if you've enjoyed watching me do this, then you might want to watch another video or two. They also feature painting from photographs. Happy painting, people.